Hello and welcome to Dr. Jane's Good Sex Guide. This week we're talking about tantric sex. We all know that stings are found, but what exactly is it? And why do those in the know find it such a healing and life-enhancing experience? We'll be finding out from our special guest this week, one of the UK's leading tantric practitioners, Mal Wiraratne. We'll also be talking about all sorts of ways you can become a better lover. I'll be here to take your calls and to offer advice. And have a pen and paper handy for our competition later. We're giving away two gift sets, including books to help you and your partner learn more about tantric sex and a luxury massage kit to get you started. To put your questions about tantric sex and becoming a better lover, call us now on free phone 0800 321 022. Now last week loads of you rang in at the end of the programme and we couldn't take your call, so do pick up that phone now. You can also send a text to Dr. Jane on 82058. Now, however dazzling the sex is at the beginning of a relationship, it can go a bit flat, can't it? Well, in the West, we think that, that sex is fantastic at, at the beginning, and then over the years, it sort of dwindles and becomes less frequent and less fulfilling. But in the East, they don't believe that. They believe that with more intimacy and with more emotional connection with your partner, you don't need to find a new partner to get that sort of buzz. You can find it within yourself and with a partner that you've had for a long time. I mean, experimenting or doing something outlandish is quite daunting for a lot of people, but we'd all like to recapture that initial high that you get. Well, that's right, Kim, but you don't have to swing from the chandeliers to make your sex life <laughs> so more glad exciting. To hear it. <laughs> and when people hear about tantra, they think it's all sort of Eastern mumbo jumbo, but it can actually make a real difference to your love life. And you can take elements from tantra to make you a better lover without having it take over your life. Well, if you want to become good at most things in life, you'd look for a teacher. And joining us on the phone now is the founder of Britain's first sex school. Professor Petrushka Clarkson is a consultant <coughs> relationship psychologist and sexologist. She runs workshops for adults who want to become extraordinary lovers. Petrushka, welcome to the program. Thank you. And we're all really dying to hear what you've got to tell us. Can you explain briefly the kind of courses that you run? Yes, I run uh, workshops for men to, who want to become better lovers and for women who want to become le better lovers. And I also do individual sex coaching. Is there a typical kind of client? Is there, are, are they people of a certain age that come to you? Uh, absolutely not a certain age. I think what makes a typical client is somebody who's very curious and who really is also what I would call erotically ambitious. They would like to become erotic black belt masters, you know? I mean, when you say that, it makes sense, because I suppose the initial reaction is that why do we need lessons in sex? It should just come naturally, shouldn't it? Well, the basic things come naturally, as, but then anything that is an art, like a sport or a, mu uh, or a musical instrument, you're going to devote yourself to. So, yeah, you can, you can naturally play on the guitar, or you could go and get some coaching and practice and become a major rock star. It all depends on the league in which people want to play, doesn't it? So what are your tips for becoming a major rock star in bed? Oh, I'm sorry, but I wrote a book about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've looked at the book. I mean, share us a taste. Give us a taste of what's in your book that, that, that people can, can take from that. All right. One thing that men can learn is how to give women ejaculating orgasms that go on for hours and hours. I can hear the phones going hot now as people ring to get the details of that. The details of everything is on our text page 630. But how do people react in your workshops, Petrushka? Are they enthusiastic or embarrassed? They're no, really people just come because they want to learn. They're serious students. They want to understand themselves and other people and the way sexuality interacts in our world. So really, I find that, what, as you say, what is typical is somebody who is curious, who is eager to find out, and who wants to avail themselves of accurate scientific and psychological knowledge. Petrushka, thank you very much indeed for joining us. You're very welcome. Now, tantric sex is an ancient practice that's catching on among Hollywood stars and slowly filtering out to the rest of us. So is it greeted here with wild enthusiasm or blank looks? We've been asking what it means to some of you. Probably sting. 
the big way. Actually, we're going to see Sting um, in May. So, <laughs> bring him. There's an um, article about Trudy Styler in one of the the Sunday papers this week. So straight away, Sting. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah. I know it's a method of making love for hours and hours and hours without any sort of ejaculation. Da, 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 da. I don't know. <laughs> Does it sound like a good idea to you? <laughs> Why not? Uh, well, it might be nice, but it might get a bit tedious. <laughs> Sting and Trudy Styler do <laughs> I know nothing about it at all. <laughs> no, I don't do drugs. <laughs> I don't think it's really something that many people do, though. I think it's something that people just joke about and know that Sting does, because it's all he ever talks about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people with beards do it. I'll fall asleep. <laughs> I've seen it on the TV. I'd probably fall asleep, to be honest with you. From what I've seen, the, 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 sort of the, the minimum of it, it seems to involve a lot of... Uh, touching of sort of hands and um, getting in touch with various parts of yourself without actually doing anything for a long time. <laughs> it's all to do with breathing, isn't it? It's very intense. Yeah, really intense. It goes on for hours. Yeah, maybe a bit dull. Actually, it's on the woman. <laughs> what time <apparently>. consuming? <laughs> yeah. yeah. To be sort of like spread out and sort of ning 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 ning. No, <laughs> it wouldn't do anything for me. She could be really missing out. We don't have much clue, do we? We really don't. And in Britain, we tend to shy away from mysticism. By the end of the programme, we'll have a much better idea. But Tantra can really help people with sexual problems. Women who have problems with orgasm, men who can't get an erection, or who have premature ejaculation. It can be a real bonus. But there's that real feeling that it's boring and dull and it goes on forever. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We're very result-orientated. It's meant to be sort of penetration, bit of sex both have an orgasm at the same time if and that's lucky. a result absolutely yeah. <laughs> but in fact in tantra it's much more about enjoying the journey and if you're enjoying the journey you're not lying there staring at the ceiling and examining where the wallpaper's peeling you're having fun sounds good <laughs> we're about to find out a lot more because joining us now is one of the uk's leading tantric practitioners mal wiraratni mal give us your definition then of tantric sex put us all out of our misery Okay, tantric sex is about bringing sexuality and spirituality together um, and this is uh, not a quick sex thing, it is take bringing the consciousness into bed, therefore you make love in a prolonged way rather than... Now, you're saying it takes quite a long time, what are the misconceptions then? Because there we heard that it could be boring and dull if it goes sure. on for too long. Yeah. That is, if you don't bring your consciousness into this making love, then it is going to be boring. But if you bring your consciousness into the making love, then it is not going to be boring because you are creating energy and you are moving energy. You are working with the energy, uh, with your consciousness, then it won't become boring. It sounds quite complicated. I mean, how straightforward is it to learn and, and to, to take home and, and do in bed with your partner? It's very easy to learn. Basically, it involves uh, breathing techniques, moving your body, making some sounds, and then being receptive, opening up all your senses of your smell, your hearing, your eyes, your touch, opening up all the senses and bringing your consciousness into it. So therefore, it's not like a eat, having a quick um, takeaway. You're going for a six-course meal and taking the time and enjoying the pleasure of uh, the dinner. And by taking your time and relaxing, you, you can have better and longer orgasms. I mean, in what way and what sort of orgasms do you have? First of all, let me define what an orgasm is. Orgasm is a form of energy that is created in the base of your spine. And if you imagine there's a tube going from the base to the crown, uh, this energy is flowing in this tube right to the crown and out or to the whole body, to every cell in your body. This is the definition of a full body orgasm. The next thing is, why can't people have this full body orgasm? Uh, there are emotions such as sadness, fear, shame, guilt, mistrust, anger. Uh, all these emotions, when you are about to create energy and when you are about to move this energy to your body, these negative emotions, they come and block this energy. So suddenly when you are excited and you are becoming orgasmic, suddenly you lose it and you don't know what happened to it. This is because your negative imprints that is stored in the pelvic area, they block this energy, so therefore you cannot have a full body orgasm or any orgasm. So your experiences in the past can stop you letting go and having an orgasm? Normally, events that took place as a child between year zero to year mm. seven, uh, it could be something you have seen or your cultures or religious belief 
or some sexual abuse that you had. Uh, all these things uh, make negative imprints in your pelvic area. And it's not all about just working towards orgasm, though, is it? There are other health benefits, too. Yes. The purpose of the orgasm, okay, orgasm is a pleasurable thing. That's why people like look forward to have it. Absolutely. This. But the real meaning of an orgasm and the purpose of it is to heal. The sexual energy is the most powerful healing energy. This is our self-repairing mechanism for our body. As long as you keep your energy channels open and create energy and allowing this energy to free flow throughout your cellular system, and this energy will repair every cell in your body. The reason why we can't have this self-healing mechanism is because we armor ourselves, we close ourselves, different parts of our body uh, because of for emotions that has happened as a child or as an adult. And these uh, blockages reduce the, the, the diameter of the energy uh, channel and then it doesn't allow the free flow of energy or completely shut down the energy flow. It, so it, therefore you experience dysfunctions in those areas. It's obviously a really intimate thing coming to somebody like yourself. I mean, how do you go about finding somebody that you trust? Is it easy to find somebody like you that you can trust and come to? First of all, the client has to trust herself and there is a thing called gut feeling. Mm -hmm. Women uh, are very clever. When they look at the person, they can scan the person very quickly. It takes only a second for her to feel whether she can trust or not. So first of all, you need to trust yourself. And then your gut feeling will tell, yes, I can uh, go for this tantric session. So first of all, you have to actually meet face to face mm -hmm. uh, in a place, um, in a clinic or somewhere. So to feel that you can trust this person. And then maybe to have a head massage or reflexology or so something. sort of a gentle, just a gentle introduction. introduction before you, uh, then you, the, with this work, the therapist has to earn the trust. Trust is not a thing that can be asked. Uh, so it's the, the weight is on the therapist side to earn the trust from the client, then only the client can have this And feeling. you're mentioning women there, but it's not just women, is it? It's men as well? No, it's men as well, yeah. But I only work on women. Uh, but yeah, this tantric work is very, very beneficial for both men and women. Lovely. Mal, for the moment, thank you very much. Stay with us and we'll be speaking to you again in a little while. Well, if you'd like more information about anything in the program, you'll find it on our text page 630. Coming up next, you can call Dr. Jane and Mal Weiraratne with your questions about tantric sex. Calls are free on this number, 0800 321 022. So, give us a call now. In the meantime, here's something to think about. Hello again. Now have a pen and paper ready for our competition coming up shortly. We're giving away two sets of luxury massage kits and books to help you start your tantric journey. First though, Dr. Jane Gilbert is here to take your questions about becoming a better lover and to unravel the mysteries of tantric sex. We're joined by our special guest, Mal Weira Ratney. You can call us free on 0800 321 022 or send a text message to Dr. Jane on 82058. You don't have to leave your name if you prefer not to. Okay, straight onto the phones. Hi, Kirsty. Hi, you Right, Kirsty, you're from Newcastle. You're 35. Do you enjoy sex? No, I don't. Why? Um, mainly because I find it hard to relax, and all my partners in the past have been highly sexual. You in a relationship at the moment? Yes, I am, but I feel there's an amount of pressure there on it. Okay. I think, I think Kirsty, that you're actually quite typical of a lot of women. There's, we, we, as we said we're very results orientated and um, men when they're making love may feel that it's, they want their, to give their partner an orgasm and then that puts pressure on you to have an orgasm and because you're under so much pressure that makes you tense, it's almost impossible to let go and that's why women start faking. So actually using elements of Tantra where you're not focusing on racing towards orgasm but focusing on your body could really help. Mal, how, what do you suggest? Okay, let me explain the, the structure of the, the yoni which yeah. we call the vagina in Sanskrit, we call it yoni. Let's take the yoni out and we put it on a map. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you put it on a map, you have three different buttons, three types of buttons. There are millions of buttons there, the yeah. three types of it. One button is a positive button. When you press that, you feel absolute ecstasy. Yeah. And the second button, when you press that, it is emotional or painful or irritation. Mm. So it's a physical pain or an emotional pain mm. in the second button. 
this pleasure button became a painful button as a result of something that has happened to her as yeah. a child or as a teenager yeah. or even as an adult. And is that something she can explore herself that Kirsty can look at and see, you know, and, and think about herself? What happens is when you're making love, the reason why they don't enjoy making love is because they have more emotional buttons or more painful mm. buttons rather than pleasure buttons. Mm. Now what happens is there's a third button is when the pain becomes greater or when the emotion is greater, this is a body way of dealing with this pain or the emotion mm. is to make this second button to a third button right. which we call a numb button. Yeah. So therefore, if you have a lot of numb buttons in the uh, yoni area, yeah. whatever that you do sexually, you don't feel anything, neither okay. pleasure or pain. So, so it is, a, I mean it's a difficult problem obviously, but you can get through it, can't you? There are ways of, of, of yes. getting the through it. The way to get through is, if the yoni has got many numb buttons, yeah. this numb button has to go through the pain yeah. button first before it gets to pleasure. Yeah. It cannot bypass from numb yeah. to pleasure. So, I mean, one of the things that maybe you could do, um, Kirsty, is I I've um, read a, a lot of books on Tantra recently, and I've been amazed at how, uh, an awful lot of books on Tantra, I can assure you, and I've been amazed <laughs> at how I think you could you could start off exploring it with your partner just as an introduction before maybe considering going to somebody like Mal who will take it further and what one of the games that they suggested was a way of relaxing with your partner and you would and with no penetration planned stroke each other and you sort of say yes no maybe or yes please and you find what parts of your body give you pleasure sort of yes idea and what parts of your body you don't enjoy being touched and that can without putting pressure on right we're going to go on and make love afterwards that can really help but I would suggest um, I mean we've got a competition where you can win some tantra books but I mean it, it could be worth getting a book and exploring it because it's all about instead of tensing towards orgasm relaxing lots of deep breathing and that can help you, you it's, get to it's a lot that. about communication I mean Kirsty yeah. do you and your partner communicate with each other uh, not really, mm. just recently going on Viagra, which has put more pressure on me. It's right. like the basic thing, isn't it, talking to each other, mm. and I, I know it can be hard. Kirsty, I hope that's helped. We wish you the very best of luck. Thanks very Thank much. You. Take care. Bye-bye. Now then, we've got a text from Paul in Cumbria. How does Paul get his wife to agree to trying tantric sex? It's what we alluded to earlier, that sometimes people are a bit afraid of something like this. Yeah, and I, I suppose perhaps being more informed will really help Paul. I mean, it's, it's not a case of forcing somebody to do something they don't want to do. But I'm sure when you know more about it, it's not that you're agreeing to something frightening. It's what you're actually agreeing to is becoming more intimate and closer with your partner. Is that right? The reason why one wouldn't like to go mm. to a Tantra workshop is the emotion that is stopping them to do anything about sexuality mm. because the sexuality is gone dead because of the emotion that has stopped this. It could be a pain, fear, shame, mm. guilt or whatever the emotion. Mm. So if you can communicate with the partner and recognize the emotion that's stopping them mm. and talk about it, then that will make it possible for the person to go forward. And I suppose another way of persuading them is that a lot of Tantra is focusing on a woman's pleasure. It's focusing on both pleasures, but there's quite a lot of focus on the woman's pleasure um, so that you and your partner can have whole body, body orgasms and so sex will be more enjoyable. Maybe that would encourage your partner to start with. Absolutely. Oh, right. Fred in Newcastle. Hi, Fred. Oh, it's a text. Right. No, that's no problem. I didn't catch that one. We've got another one here. We've got three kids under nine. How do we fit tantric sex or some of the elements into our already chaotic lives? That's from a frustrated mum of three in Whitehaven. I'm mm. surprised we get time for sex at all, actually. Well, when you hear about people like Sting and they're at it for ten hours a night, when you've got children, I mean, I know that, frankly, you'd rather get some sleep. Yeah. But there are, it doesn't have to take a lot of time, does it, Mal? You can, no. you can enjoy elements of Absolutely. it in your relationship. Absolutely. It is actually bringing your consciousness into making mm. love. Uh, you spend time eating, you spend time bathing, mm. washing, you spend time doing all these things and making love, you mm. have to spend time. But the difference in tantric work is bringing consciousness into mm. the lovemaking rather than just doing it. Mm. That is very important. And, and a few tips that, that I heard about, and you'll tell me if I'm right or not, is that when you are, when you feel that you are about to have an orgasm, this is, this is right for a man and a woman, relax but also perhaps step back a bit try and channel the energy back up your body 
take some deep breaths and relax. For the man, you can also tense the, um, uh, the muscle which stops you having a wee. It's like the pelvic floor in women. We're used to exercising it, but men aren't. And that can push off orgasm. And then if you keep on going, then you will find that you have a stronger and more <coughs> pleasurable whole body orgasm. Now, you're not going to be able to do that just the first time you do it. It takes practice, yeah. but that can help, can't it? There's a little tip that there are two muscles in the pelvic area. Mm. Uh, one is in the ring of the anus, mm. and the other muscle is in the ring of the vagina mm. or in the penis. If you can squeeze the two muscles together, this we call the PC muscles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you can squeeze the two muscles together while you are breathing in and out yeah. deep, uh, this will help a lot to release emotions that you are mm. holding there. Okay, we're going to take one last text from Emma in Newcastle who says, No amount of foreplay turns me on. What can I do? Well, I think one thing is talk about the foreplay. Obviously, if you're not turned on, maybe the foreplay isn't what you enjoy. Think about what you do enjoy. Another thing is get to know yourself. In Tantra, they talk about loving yourself, but also pleasuring yourself. If you actually um, learn what you like to do to your body when you're relaxed in a bath or something, then you may find what you want your partner to do. Unless you know yourself and love yourself, your partner's not going to be able to know what to do. So try that. Mal and Jane, thank you very much. I do hope we've helped, but it's time now for our competition. This week, we're giving away two gift sets, including a selection of books to guide you through your tantric journey and luxury massage kits to get you in the mood. And as we're talking about staying power, the question is, which film star has had the longest career at playing romantic leads? Is it A, Cary Grant, B, Hugh Grant, or C, Robert Redford? The number to ring is 09014-901850. That's 09014-901850. Calls cost 50 pence. Calls from mobile phones might vary. And remember, the details are on our text page 630. Good luck. That's it for this week. We're back same time next Friday when we'll be talking about the help that's available for some of the problems that can get in the way of a happy love life. So, if you can't get it up, can't get it in, or simply can't be bothered, give us a call. We will see you then. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>